Hello, everyone. Welcome to day nine, scenario nine of the Google Teacher Certification Training. We are working with a very long scenario today, but don't let it throw you because this is really very straightforward in what we have to do. The good news is one of the questions I get from people and have gotten from people is people want to know, so form, and you say form is the same thing as a quiz, but doesn't look like a quiz. You're right. So we're going to learn today about how to make a form a quiz. It's very simple. So first thing we're going to do in the scenario, it says to go into our folder. And I went ahead and created an announcement for today that says we explore Google Forms to become a Google quiz. But I also wanted to show you something. See up here where these double arrows are? That's where you can go in and look at stuff that's already been used in your Google Classrooms. Now, remember, I've got a ton of Google Classrooms in here. Here's the one that we're using for today. So if I wanted to, I could have just gone in and reused this particular form. In other words, just click on it and say, insert and see it just comes back and brings it now why would i do this we have if you take the time to build your google classroom so that after the first year of using it you have all this material sitting in there you don't have to recreate wheels folks it's already created and you just reuse it that applies for just about everything assignments, announcements, you name it, you can hit that review, go in and look where it was and just bring it back. All right, so I'm gonna go into our classwork and I'm gonna jump over here to our class drive. And in our class drive, we have a folder called exam materials. Now, I went ahead and made up the Google Fun quiz because you know I didn't wanna torture you with you having to sit here and watch me type all this stuff in. So I went ahead and did that. Now, I want to give you a heads up. On this scenario, and I found this in the test as well because it drove me crazy, it kind of gets things bass backwards. In other words, it kind of gets things backwards. And so what you want to do is you want to pay very close attention after you create your so, uh, survey, which you know how to do, you come over here, you click on the plus sign. It tells you to make one multiple choice. It tells you to make one checkbox. And again, we know how to do this. We just come in here and we say, okay, I'm going to make it a multiple choice. I'm going to make it a checkbox. I'm going to make it a short answer. You know how to do this now. So I can get rid of it. So I have three in here. And it says uh, Google Blank allows you to create quizzes and surveys. And this one says, what Google certifications can you earn? All right, there's my survey. Let's turn that into a quiz. And make the Google form a quiz. See, it says that once in here, but it really doesn't emphasize it. And you have to go into settings, the little gear. You go to quizzes, make this a quiz. Boom. There you go. Now, what you can do is you can tell the person who takes a quiz, you can give them, they can see the answers and they can see the correct answers. In other words, they'll tell you what you did, and they'll tell you if, you, here, if you're wrong, here's the real answer. So we have all of that in here. It's as simple as that, guys. Now let's go back, because we're not done. Let's go back to settings. Let's go to presentation. It tells us in here that it wants us to put up a little message at the end when you finish the quiz. Thank you for taking my quiz. There you go. Now we'll save that. And I'll come back up here for the last one. It wants us to do an email address. It wants us to do receipts. In other words, that person took it. And it wants us to limit it to one response. Now, down here, it doesn't tell us to do this, but, you know, think about it. 
You can let people see what they did after they submitted it. You can see summary charts and, and text responses. In other words, again, they can see what they did. Okay, we're gonna save that. Now we need to go in here and we need to work on uh, the answer key. Notice how everything changed. Now we have a new look to our page and that is we now have an answer key below. And so I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna tell it here's the answer. And then I'm gonna tell it how many points that's worth. Let's see, I think this one is worth, where's my last page, here we go. This one is worth 10 points, 10 points. I'm gonna type that in, not 100, 10. Okay, and I'm going to tell it done. Then I'm going to come down here. And again, I'm going to add a correct answer, which should be forms. And I'm going to give this 20 points. And I'm going to say done. Last one. I'm going to come down here, hit the answer key. And the answers on this one, this is a checkbox, is certification one, level two, certification in, uh, in, innovator and trainer, not bookkeeper. Okay. This one is worth 40, I believe. Nope, it's 30. Why would I think that Google would do something? totally different. Done. There you go. So let's review. You have made a form now into a quiz. You have asked it to collect the email addresses of everybody taking this test. And then when we went into settings, we see that we're collecting email addresses. We're going to get a response receipt. Um, and I think, you know, this one is kind of up to you. If someone wants to know, they can ask for it. I would think it always. Requires sign in, limit to one response. Will be required to sign in to Google. Well, that is exactly what they have to do anyway. Presentation, there's where we put our little confirmation thing. You know, now it doesn't say to do this in a scenario, but boy, if I were doing this with a class, I sure would show them a progress bar. That way they can see how far along they are in this. This takes a lot of the um, anxiety. And you, you well know that there's a lot of test anxiety out there with kids. This, I think, helps them a lot with that. If you're worried about the legitimacy of your test or the, the fact that kids might want to cheat, you can shuffle the question order so that Steve gets one set of questions in a certain order, and then Susie sitting next to him gets them in a different order. Really cuts down on the cheating. Quizzes. We had to go in here and just click this over, and we made our survey a quiz. And they can see their grade after each submission. And you can see down here that we can say, here are your missed questions. Here's the correct answer. Here are the point value. Simple as that. Now let's go back to the scenario. Um, Use the answer key function for each question, correct answer, and so on. Sure. And it wants us to send it to you know who. So we're going to go up here to send. I'm going to go to email. And we are sending it to GCE level one. And of course, like we've seen in everything that we've done, it fills it in for us. And the message, though, that we're going to put in here is we're going to tell her, here is my Google quiz. Otherwise, it's a little confusing to default. Now, we're not going to send it in the email unless it tells us to do that. Let's see. Oh, it does say that. 
include form and email. There we go. And now I'm going to send it. Boom. Done, 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 done. Open the exam materials folder. Open the Google form titled Google Fun Quiz. Created a Google Sheet out of the quiz results. Let's go look at that real fast. So we need to go to our Google Drive. We need to find our quiz. We're going to look at responses. How do you do this? Remember? Spreadsheet. Is create a new one? Yep. There's our Google test spreadsheet. Okay, we're going to need to put here. It wants us to put the score, the total grade, and they want us to filter it. Remember how to do this? It's easy. So you come in here and you create a filter. The filter then shows up in the column, and you're going to sort that. Are we sorting it by ABC order? Yep. Boom. Done. Share the sheet results with... Miss Fizzit. I'm going to come over here. Share. And again, we're going to put in GCE. And there's our wonderful email that we've been using. Just as simple as that can be. Let's make sure if there's anything else we need to do before we send it. We created the filter and we are sharing it. And it wants us to, you know what? Let's, it, I, it almost caught me. It almost caught me. But let's go up here and we need to change this because what it says to do is to make this thing say Google Foo results. So I'm going to go up here to where it says Google Foo quiz and I'm going to say results. Boy, it almost caught us there, guys. Let that um, catch you. And it's Google Foo, not Google Fun. Man, tricky. Trying to be tricky. But we knew how to do everything else, didn't we? We went in here. We created the filter. We went into where the filter is in the column. And we sorted it A to Z. So now all the scores that come in, they will be sorted that way. And we are going to share it. And remember, we're going to share it with our good friend, the GCE parent. And let's see, is there a note or anything? You almost caught me. Ooh. Can view only. Boy, it pays to really read these, doesn't it? And now I'm going to send it. That's it. You just completed scenario nine. Congratulations. As you see, it's waiting for one response. Nobody's my test. I think the thing that I hope by now that you're comfortable with is you're comfortable with moving around and working inside of these various documents and within the structure of the Google Classroom. I hope that this isn't something that you find scary. Um, what would we do to put this in? I'm going to let you think about that. In other words, right now it's not in my classwork. It's in the stream. But I don't see it in my classwork. Do you? So how would you add that into your classwork? Think about that. It's not a part of the test. It might be. So be ready to think about how you would do that. 
would you make it an assignment or would you make it a quiz assignment? Would you make it a question? Would you make it a material? If you'd already used it in the past, you could just come right back and click on this and pull it back in here, but we haven't done that. If I were to do it as an assignment, I would come in here and I could do an add from my Google Drive. There it is. Let's check our understanding. Okay. Simple as that. Down here, complete the quiz. Okay. Simple. And I'm going to assign it. Uh, let's see, the points though, it was 10, 20, 30, so that's 60. So the point value is 60. Okay. What about a due date? If I made a due date, what would happen there, do you think? Well, you know what's going to happen. It's going to show up on the calendar. So we're going to take this on April 20th. And, you know, could I put in a time? Eh, let's do that just for giggles. So we'll do that at 11. A.M. Now I'm going to assign it to everybody. But you also know from the, we were talking earlier about how you can assign it to everybody or once you have that list of names, which we don't, um, you can see that list of names and you can do a little check, check, check for these five kids. And then, then maybe you have a different quiz for another group of kids. There's our assignment. There's our quiz. And it's sitting here waiting for us to take the quiz. Not hard. Not hard at all. Now, what if we had done it as a quiz assignment? Look what it does. It is waiting for us to create the quiz within the quiz assignment. Well, I got to create it. Thanks a lot. So I'm going to go back to my Google Drive. I'm going to come up here to Google Fun Quiz that we've already made. There it is. I can get rid of this one because I don't need it now. And now I've got a Google Quiz. And I'm going to say, please take this quiz to check your understanding. Simple, simple. Again, I've got to go over here and change up the fact that it's worth 60 points. Um, and the due date, I may change the due date to that Monday again. And again, I can do a time. So we were going to do it at 11. A.M. And this is where I could do assign it, schedule it. In other words, I could schedule this thing so it won't show up until the day and the time that I want it to show up, which is nice because they can't see it before. So if I click on schedule, there you go. In other words, it's going to be available. Let's call it being available at 10. And now I scheduled it. Simple as that. And as you can see in our stream, it's now showing me the assignment. And over here, it's due Monday. So it's giving us a heads up as to when it's going to happen. And go back into classwork. And as you can see, I have two different things here. So the Google quiz kind of is a standalone. But the assignment, I should have other stuff in here. 
Agreed. There would be other stuff in here. There'd be like the little flashcards or something like that. You know, something else that I have created. This is a standalone. Simple as that. All right, let's go back out. Um, there's so few questions left <laughs> for me to put in here. So I just went ahead and gave you sort of a general flashcards kind of look. So it says your Gmail account for work can be accessed on what devices? You know all this. Smartphone, tablet, computer, school, whatever. You're preparing for an after-school session with teachers to train them on Google Docs. You created a great getting going guide that you want to have and keep for reference. What sharing settings should you set for the doc? You want everybody to be able to view it, but not edit it. What are the destination options for storing and viewing responses to Google Forms? You can store them in a new spreadsheet, store in an existing spreadsheet. You know all these things now. Now, sorry for the background noise. Um, we, tomorrow will be our last day to have our training. Uh, tomorrow's uh, scenario is extremely simple. And I have a guest coming in, uh, a young lady who teaches up in Meade County, who has an excellent Google Classroom. Uh, she is a high school teacher, but she is also a trained elementary school teacher. So she can help us see uh, how to, how she has set up her classroom. If you want to join us, she and I will be getting together here in the GTC around 2 p.m. tomorrow. And of course, I will film everything. If you have a question that you want me to put to Ms. Gupton, uh, and you're, but you can't be there for the training, just, you know what to do. 502-457-2937. Send me a text and in the text put in there, hey, Steve, would you ask Ms. Gupton how she da 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 what we're going to go through is we're going to look at her structure so that you can get a sense of the use of topics, how things fit within the topics, how assignments can be set up. We're going to go through all of that. But of course, we'll create this real quick because Google Groups is nothing. Um, and then we're going to open Gmail and then we're going to send an email to the group that we made. A Google group is nothing more than an email distribution list all it is but you can also use it for other things like hangouts etc we'll do a little bit of discussion about hangouts google plus is something that you can't get to um, outside of a, of a business or a school so i can talk about google plus but we really can't show it but that's okay because the questions that have to do with google plus are minimal and you know you know enough now that you could do this all right, that's it for today. As always, if you have those questions, comments, or concerns, 502-457-2937.